My next one is about um, covert intest because as we see a lot of that today. About what COVID, sorry? Covert. What TikTok? No, no, covert. No, no, not the TikTok challenge down. Oh. Yeah. Covert is like um, subtle, like. Yeah, subtle incest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what incest is, right? Yeah, but. I'm, I'm thinking about the right thing, incest, right? Yeah, yeah, like incest when family members. Oh, yeah, right. I was just yeah. making sure Pa said it and it was wrong. <laughs> right. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, but this covert incest basically is just, or subtle uh, incest, is just, um, is just a woman. For example, like a single mom, right, where she calls her son her king, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and she depends on her son emotionally. She's emotionally attached to her son, where in fact she should be seeking that emotional attachment from like a dating partner rather than her son. And she sort of thinks like that no one's good good for him, or the father, the single dad is like no one's good for my daughter, that kind of stuff, overprotective, right? So. In today's day and age, because you lot mentioned your relationships and the dynamics that happen in it sometimes. You mentioned that the guy not pulling his own weight kind mm. of thing. where And then he's trying to get you to stop doing essentially what's bringing the money in the relationship, yeah. right? What's your, what's your take on men that want to be... They want to be baby. They want their girlfriends to be their their mothers kind of thing what's your what's your take basically they want you to be their mum <laughs> me you to know, be a you... man their mum their mum their man's mum no a man's yeah, like mum yeah. yeah um do you know what like with my ex-boyfriend i feel like i mothered him a lot i mothered him a lot like to the point it's little things like running a bath cooking dinner like i said it's but then like cooking your partner dinner it's not an issue don't get it twisted but when it's like oh yeah do everything i am not your mother it is very true like and for him for him and his mother's um connection his mum used to do the same thing for him like he'll go to, he'll be like mum make me breakfast she'll do it mum make me lunch she'll do it like that's he that's just how he is and i've got some um I haven't got another kid, just one. I call it one and done. I've got my beautiful son more than enough, do you know what I mean? So for me to be getting a partner, I don't need to be sitting there being his mother. I'm not a mother to two, I'm a mother to one. I don't mind looking after you, being there for you. Do you know what I mean? It's like I said, it's about, it's you've got to be on the same level, 50-50. Give me something, I'll give you something back. Like, it's just not all about, oh yeah, you lie in bed while I cook for you, I clean for you, I wash your clothes, I make you dinner. You're a grown man at your big age, go get a job, go work, you know? Sometimes you might be hungry, you might be tired. I'll make dinner. Wait, he didn't have a job? Um, like I said. Oh, okay, fair dinner. enough. Fair <laughs> enough. We're not going to talk about them once there. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Self employed, self employed. Self employed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, what about you? Four years relationship. What you know what? Saying? I feel like we do do a lot of things for each other. Like he can run me a bath, I can bath. He'll cook sometimes. Mm. Obviously, more time I would prefer to cook. Jam. What's his background? You don't mind me asking. Um, <laughs> he is Jamaican. And he's got like a quarter English. That's good. That's dope. That's, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Jamaican as well, so it's like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, 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 that thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, men come correct like that. You know what I'm trying? Yeah. No, so Hannah, good. it's up to you now. Yeah, like you said, men don't come correct like that. It's because of the way they were brought up. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. No, honestly. It's true. Uh, yeah, speak the truth. Do you know what I mean? It's when their mum treat their children or their sons, for example, a certain way and do everything for them and treat them like a king, like she's serving him. Mm -hmm. He then expects that from a future partner. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So they're already setting this high bar that we're not, we're not going to be able to meet. We can, in terms of like the basics, the cooking, the cleaning, the looking after you, giving you affection and stuff like that. But she just gives him a whole nother, I don't know, like for example, with my ex, his mum just worshipped him. Do you know what I mean? Like to a point where he that's, that's then what he wanted. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be worshipped yeah. and idolised and whatever like his mum did to him. That's something I couldn't give him. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like we're, we're both equal people. Like you're, you're a man, I'm a woman and stuff like that. Yeah, you have your duties, like traditional duties and I have my traditional duties. But no one is better than the other. So do you know what I mean? I felt like I was just always taken from myself to just make him happy and yeah. keep trying to like, no, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I felt like a slave. I felt yeah. like a slave to a king. Mm. 
Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Instead I, of a wife. To and even husband. like when you're working, and then obviously like me, I'm a single parent. So when it gets to me working two jobs, to so then me doing a school run, then me looking after my son, cleaning, cooking. Well, that was in the relationship. Huh? Um, before in my relationship, I only had one job, not two back then. So obviously mm-hmm. when I was doing that, you know, it was a lot. But now having two jobs and a son, being a single parent, like where am I gonna find time to cook for this man and and, and rub his feet and run his bath and obviously like I said, if I do get in a relationship in the future, obviously yeah. Yeah, I don't mind in my free time. Yeah, I will do these things for you. But as it goes for me running around like a mad woman every day, not even enough hours in a day, as it comes to go home and cook me dinner and all these things, no. I will, yeah, but no, I won't look after you like so, my child. So hypothetically speaking, right, if you were to meet a guy and um, let's say he said, babe, don't worry about your job, I got you kind of thing no, i want to be a stay home no um i i don't need to rely on no man in my life i never have and i never will do you know what i mean my mum's always shown me how to stand on my own two feet and i moved out my mum's house at the age of 16 so from a young age i've had to grow up quick and i've never in my life ever needed to rely on a man so i don't mm. see why i've come this far to then go oh yeah i'll stop what i'm doing i'll stop my income and just rely on this man when a man walks out tomorrow, what am I going to be left with? Mm. A cardboard box? Nah, hon. My life is still revolving the same way, if not better, but when he's gone. Th- doesn't that mean then you're, you're always approaching relationship kind of suspiciously in terms of the, like, no, not if necessarily. fair conditions? Not like. necessarily. Like I hear some guys say, oh yeah, in some relationships, uh, th- the guy will say, yeah, you start home, look after our child, I'll go out and get our money. That's fine. Each relationship works different. But me, I'm a go-getter. I don't need to... Be- Obviously, my son, he goes to school like that. So in them hours, I'll be working or say like I've got my little one and I've got work. I'll take him to mum's, for instance, should, like things like that. But as like, there's just no, it just, it just couldn't work. I feel like you just need to find someone that matches your ambition. And that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. And I feel like until I meet that person, that's when I'll cross that path. But I feel like for right now, I'm happy to, you know, go on dates. I've been dating. I went on a date last Friday, for instance. It was lovely. So cute. Lovely. Love him. Love him. Proper love him. Yeah, it was good. But... You love him already. No, no, no. She loved the (laughs) date. She loved the experience. The free food. This is the thing. It'll be so good. Free food, free drinks. I I cannot say. I I didn't get one ick, one red flag. Not texting the girls. I need to leave here. Call me. Say there's an emergency. I didn't have to do that for once. Mm -hmm. And that's what's scaring me. That's what's scaring me. It it was like too good to be true. Do you know what I mean? If it's so too the, good to then be that true, means it just, usually is. It usually is, babe. And I'm waiting yeah. for it. I'm waiting for the text. Oh, yeah, it's thing is girlfriend. No, I'm not around here. <laughs> just waiting on it. No. Yeah, but then, look, because you guys are putting valid points, but you're approaching relationships, like, in a scarcity, like, mindset. You're very suspicious of the man. Oh, but that's how you've got to be. It, that's how you've got to be, because if not, your heart's going to get broken, baby girl. Like that you have to be you have to have your guard up and have to have your suspicions because like i said there's it's a cool world out here right if you're dating someone and if you're going to be with them you've got to you know find out every last detail about that person you don't just get in a relationship in order to just be with them for a couple months and leave them if i was going to get in a relationship again the next person that i'm in a relationship with i would be looking to marry them I'm not here just wasting my time. Another eight years, what, to do what? Yeah, but that's why we, Eric mentioned, we, you talk about outcomes, you know, d- desired outcomes when you date and, and everything else. You mentioned those things rather than just going with the flow. Yeah, but you need to be ready to talk about them big things that, do you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like, really- obviously, maybe if you're seeing someone for seven, eight months, then, you know, it's got to the point of you're just at the talking stage, but you want to go further. Maybe you can address, like, how we're going to do this. Uh-huh. But for me, I'm very, um, I don't want to really, I don't know. I just don't like doing too much. No, no, okay. What like, I hear don't text is me girls, for two days. Say, I'm not texting you. They say they want it to come organically. They want that conversation Naturally. to come organically. But, yeah. okay. Most of the time it doesn't though. It doesn't. That's my point, babe. Yeah. So Most let me, of the time it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't, you do, exactly. You do need to give that little push and, and be a bit brave and, and ask them questions, especially if you want certain things like, I don't know, certain criteria is met. Exactly. So this is what I'm saying. I'm start, I'm siding with the women here, right? Telling you, like, look, you know what you want. You got to stand up for what you want. Not just be like, oh yeah, I'm the bad B online, da 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 da. <laughs> but you don't, you don't, feel comfortable talking about your wants and your desired outcomes because I think that's key and that's how you filter out you don't filter out the uh you don't read out the bad guys by you know kissing them you read out the bad guys by 
questioning them, scrutinizing. Putting them on the spot. Mm. Yeah. I was just like you, honestly. I was just like you. And also when it came to certain conversations, stuff like that, I felt like I held back so much, which is why I didn't get to know the person properly. And obviously that's on that's that's my fault. And then um where I worked on myself for like the past year, that's that's the first point I noticed. I held back on asking so many important questions that I could have you know, I could have stopped that relationship from going further and stuff, you know? So I feel like it's so important, you know, you don't know this guy, you don't know anything about him. So I feel like it's like, don't worry about hurting his feelings or or feeling like you're going to be a bit too much no, no, or he's going to run away. No, no, with the guy that um, that I went on a date with and that, um, I, he's, he's a friend from before. Ooh. So it's not like so I'm just meeting someone new. That, yeah? Oh yes, honey, mm. had to, no, it had to be wow. done. Wow, yeah, so my, my okay, <laughs> leftovers, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is on the whole podcast, okay? But yeah, yeah, I'm just here giving everyone my life story. He's, but yeah, that's getting, what it's about. He's getting seconds, boy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, he's everyone. watching this right now. I was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> I did a good job. <laughs> exactly. That that brings me. That brings me to a whole new question because. Can men and women be friends? Yeah. yeah. I'm friends with one of my exes. And we're pro- like, I will like, I would speak to him on the phone. But before I was with him, this is my ex from far as with my baby dad. Before I was with him, like we never ended on a bad note. I was, I was only with him five months, like shorter space of time. But yeah, like we never ended because it, um, like, it was a great, it just depends how you end. We was really good friends and I just left him because I felt like I couldn't give him what he needed. Okay, Miss Quiet at the back. Sorry, did you mean, yeah. sorry, like can an ex like or do you just mean like, just, just in general? Just in general. Oh, just in general. Mean, can you be just in general. Ex? Just in general. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I feel like in general, yeah. But I, I feel like a lot of boys feel like, do you know what I mean? Because I wasn't, obviously when I've got in a relationship, I wasn't allowed to have no male mates. I've only got one. I was only allowed to have one. And that's my son's um, godfather. Okay. That's but it. it's different, like, it's different to me. I've got a lot of close, close boyfriends, but I had this one friend, I'm not going to say his name, and he pretended he was my good friend. Like, we was tight. Like, I called him my brother, everything, allowed him into my home, fed him. One night he called my phone. He said, you're right, Trina, I'm really upset going through it. It was about half 11 at night. I was like, babe, come up. Like, you don't have to go through it. Me being me, he's come up now, <clears throat> talking for a couple hours, everything fine. I've never got any sort of feeling that this guy's ever liked me like that. And like I said, he was my close friend. And yeah, he tried it on with me. And from then, I haven't spoke to him since that day. I literally said, get the fuck out of my house. Like, get the fuck out of my house. That's literally what I was going to say. I, I, I disagree with you girls. I don't feel like we can be friends simply because it depends on the setting, okay? Like you got work colleagues and stuff like that. Like you can be amicable and stuff, but men and women weren't created to be friends. And I feel feel like there's like a certain attraction there and there's certain like, I don't know, like a little devil on your shoulder. Like, no, do you know what I mean? So No, I, no, no. Because no, no, you mentioned a good thing, yeah? You wanted a date with one of the friends you had. Yeah, just taking him out of the friend zone. Yeah. So you friends. So he was zone a friend, thing. but you do yeah, you move out of that friendship. Yeah, but just, but but the thing is, like, he he was my friend, but like he wasn't like one of my everyday friends. I've known him for years. You're right, babe. See so you at the shop. You're right, I know you. No, no, yeah. I get it. I get it. For you, okay. Here's how here's how men see it. Yeah, but I've got Eric, my Eric, what's your what's your take? What's your take before? I, I don't think they can be friends. No. But, but you know, obviously there there are certain situations, right, where like let's say for instance you were in a long-term relationship with someone for 20 years and the relationship is your friends you've you got an f- established friendship but it, you're not seeing each other every single day it's like how you been this that that both of you got the, your own things going on maybe both of you in a relationship that those dynamics work for a friendship right because the frequency of contact is less so you can you can be friends in in those dynamics but it's you know when you break it down when you when, when it boils down that you can't be friends yeah but not everyone has the same intentions i know there is them guys that might you know become friends with a female because he does want to get in her knickers or whatever but it's not necessarily like that all the time i've got two very very close friends very very close friends that i've been with friends with for 10 years plus can and i ask you a quick question i've got changed in front of them i've stepped to the same bed with them like they are my best friends from primary so, school so it's because I've, they don't see you like that yeah, yeah. I've, 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 they're not I've, physically yeah. related to you yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, so I've, 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 i can relate to that i've got a friend but i'm not attracted to them 
and I'm comfortable. But, and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to give you like no signals or anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah keeping it professional. Like, so, mm. you know. But, but this is this is my question. Yeah, this is my question to you. So do you, in all honesty, right? Have you ever felt some type of attraction to him? No. To, to them? No, I think my one of my best friends, Brandon, he's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorge. Mm. But that's my whole, like... That, that I see that as my family. Like I would never look at him in any sort of like anything like that. No, but and he's he absolutely gorgeous. I'm telling you, he's so beautiful. Like no, no, I get, I get that part. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. telling you now. <laughs> oh, okay, obviously, yeah, big up to him and that. yeah, big up brands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and he doesn't like practice any authority lifestyles, like. No, like, say, like, for instance, like, he'll tell me, oh, Trina, like, some personal questions from a female, things like that, I'll always be there to give my advice. And same way he'll be for me. Mm -hmm. Like, the other week, because at mine, I was getting ready for a date, went back home. That like, he was there with my other friends, you know what I mean? Like, he's, that, that's one of my boy besties. Like, there's no, we've had never, ever shared a kiss, ever, he's never... Obviously, he tells me, oh, yeah, you look sexy. Yeah, your bum looks nice in them trousers, Trina. But that's on a friendship, like, that's on a friendship thing. Like, I'll be like, Is oh, he attracted to women? Yeah, he is. He is. I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking. That's he all. is. Yeah, he okay. is. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's all. That's all. Now, uh, well, my take on that is that uh, men and women can be acquaintances in terms of yes, I know her, uh, but in terms of um, me co coming over to yours and sleeping over, like the example you mentioned, right? Me coming over and sleeping because me and Eric, I can say, no, Eric is a friend. I can go to Eric's house and sleep over. That's calm. Nothing happens, right? Mm. And a guy, you know, I go late in the night, sleep over. You go to your mate's house late in the night and everything else. He's thinking, oh, this is my shot. This is, this is, you know, this is my chance to shoot my shot or take advantage of whatever because there's a crack in her armor and maybe she's feeling some type of way tonight. The reason, the reason I say that is because the attraction in terms of men and women is that guys desire women and some guys will not reveal their motives in fear of getting rejected, right? In fact, they might see you every day and they, they don't build up the courage or they don't have the courage to chat, to chat you up and say, Oh, you look you look fantastic. Would you wanna? So what are you trying to say that my best friend, one of my boy best friends, is is in love with me? I didn't say he's in love with you. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> You're putting words in my mouth. That's not what I said. I'm saying if you were to drop it on him, if you were to say, look, he wouldn't. He would say, Trin, are you drunk? Okay, no, 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 no. You've never tried, right? I'm saying if you were to say, look, hey, this is how I'm feeling, but that, oh, babe, I'm I'm down moment. You know what I mean? Come cheer me up. Do you know what I mean? He probably this would this then. is all yours. That's what I'm saying. I'm he probably like... would then, yeah. If I would probably, like, maybe, I don't know. Like, come, if I was to stick come, it on come him part, like that. Come, come part this thing like the, yeah, but like you know, Moses I'm not part of the sea and everything else. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying if you drop it on him, would he take it in? But I if would, he would... if he's to take it in, that means he's not. He's an acquaintance. That means he's not We've your We've never friend. had that conversation, though. So I wouldn't sit him and say he would. Like, me and him are like that, like brothers and sisters. And I've only got three friends that I would allow to come, a three boyfriends, should I say, that I would allow to come and stay at my home and, you know, be around my son and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I've only got three of them. So I do understand when you're saying, you know, not all guys and girls can be friends, but I don't have a lot of guys as friends. I have my three guys as friends. And yeah, I would hope that our relationship is genuine and just friends. Yeah, I, I, I agree to that, actually. So... Uh, so like I like I said, you, if you establish something from the beginning, yeah, if you if you if you've established something from the beginning that is solid, and the frequency of contact and the way you set the dynamics, it can work. Mm -hmm. Like I, I I don't think it's at all occasions where you can't be friends with someone. Yeah, because you can you can talk to a woman, and even though they're attractive, even though opportunity is there. If you've set such a strong foundation from the onset, like when you started, maybe you grew up together from kids and then, you know, you shared some sort of history that's strong. But in on average, the, although I'm agreeing with you, on average, the, the normal person, normal guy, 
Weren't it's not, it's not, yeah, yeah, and that's why I was so upset with my friend before, and that's why I haven't spoke to him since. This happened yeah. in 2019, like he was my proper close friend, and I was so upset because then when he tried it on me, I was thinking, has our friendship even been genuine this whole time? Like, no, but the thing, <clears throat> the thing there is, women are oblivious in terms of knowing what the guy feels towards them, and sometimes it can be reversed. The situation can be reversed. A girl likes a guy, and she doesn't want to reveal too much etc etc and the guy friends on her right but when men friend zone a girl they generally still have sex with the girl <laughs> but when women friend zone they're like no you are in that group so mm. don't ever try nothing yeah you know what i mean don't cool. if you make if you make any comment that's remotely close to being sexual that's it you're barred right mm. and and so men don't reveal that so they will happily lay around in a car and wait until that crack in your armor shows and then they'll say okay cool hey, hey yo this is my chance to get out of the friend zone boom boom yeah, boom but then it, the situation with that this thing that i just spoke about is my friend that was my friend at the time mm -hmm. called my phone late at night pretended to be proper upset yeah mm -hmm. so then you can come to my house i've then let you in my house and then you've tried to drop it like it's hot like you like like you, you knew what you're trying to come do. It's eleven o'clock at night, and you're calling me, telling me you're upset. I'm, you're coming here. I'm asking you what's wrong. You can't tell me what's wrong. You probably got You've tired lied of and said you're upset to the point you're you're trying to get me to comfort you from a situation that never even happened, just so you can try it on me. Yeah, That's because he probably got tired of waiting in the friends, and he was like, "Yeah, well, this is, now we ain't got this, me at all in his life." So this, this is my chance of this is my chance of getting in in there. So. Yeah. Anyways, that's the that's the gist of it, right? That's the gist of it. So we're gonna pedal back to can women raise men? Can that can women raise boys to be men? Yeah, I'm raising my son from to from a boy to a man. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. But what like your a child or a partner? A child, like your child, your son. Can you raise him to be like to be a man? Like Do you know what you can you can raise your son to be the best person that you can be but there's areas like Willage, South East London you know when your kids start secondary school you need to be mindful of where you put them for instance because if you're putting them you brought your church your, say like my, my son he could be a church son for instance going to church every week me teaching him manners like making him do his work every day like so polite so respectful all it takes is to go to year seven meet a wrong batch of friends and you're getting into drawing things like gangs smoking you know doing illegal things you know doing things just to fit in you know when you go through that stage everyone has it when they go to secondary school you go through a bit of a change and you meet new friends and you're around new people you never know what they could get into but it's about how you deal with it and how to take you know when i was younger i had to move away because i got in some trouble and um, yeah, but that had nothing to do with my mum and how she brought me up. That was from the choices that I made and I had to face the consequences because I chose to do them choices. But that don't mean that my mum brought me up in a bad way or whatever. That was the things that I got into, you know, when I was in year seven, in year eight, getting being naughty. Like, it, it, like obviously, if you bring your child up well enough, it's all about morals. If your child is that, that has a strong head, they will say, no, this isn't right. You know, I shouldn't be doing this. There is like, when my, my little brother, for instance, is nothing like me, he will think before he does something. You won't see my little brother coming home late from school. You won't see my little brother not going to bed on the right time. You won't see him not giving his, in his homework on, the right, homework on the right day. Like his proper, proper... His own job. Yeah, his proper... Yeah, he... he, he is. You got you, you both have sons, innit? Mm, yeah. yeah. So what's your, what's your hot take? I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but I agree as I feel like, as well, obviously a, a, a woman can raise their son on their own, but I do feel like certain elements are needed from like a male figure. Figure, yeah, a male yeah, figure. Yeah, because there's certain like, things that we don't know. Yeah, of course, but I feel like, I, I just feel like a male figure like is important to have. Obviously nine times out of 10, like the little ones will always have an uncle or my dad, for instance, CJ is so close with my dad, my little one, he's t so tight with my dad. So obviously he does still have like, male figures in his life and his his dad now does have contact with him now but yeah obviously i just feel like if if a child that hasn't got his dad there at all as a boy you know there's certain things that it'll be nice to see from your dad but i will still do that for my son as a woman same way so no, you you okay so you do 
Wait, what would you do for your son? You would emulate um, like... Like, uh, like if I, do you know, like, obviously, do you know when ladies go through their women's stages, they might feel comfortable, more comfortable talking to their mum because it's mm-hmm. a woman. Mm-hmm. So obviously, like, if he hits things like puberty, when he does, things like that, if he wants to talk to me, I will still be, you know, show him. Like, I will still, like, if there's something I don't know, I will educate myself and I will show that to him. If I can't play football, I will teach myself how to kick that ball just for the sake of my son because that's what you do when you love your kids. Fair enough. Hannah? I feel like um, to a certain extent and why I say that is because it all depends on um, your morals and values and stuff and like she said there's there are certain things that um, you know only a male can can teach a son do you know what I mean but um, it all depends what you mean as well by can you raise uh, when I say um, can you raise a boy to a man for example we have crazy scenarios and i'm going to mention it like the mason greenwood situation where oh wow right wow. so you know you can a boy a young man so we call it a young man be raised into a man to know that you no know, you don't put hands on women you don't uh you don't deceive women you know you outline what your goals are and if your goals align then you go further where you want to go if you know if you want to, if you both want to be for the streets, you can both be for the streets. You know what I mean? If you don't want to be and keep it into a nuclear family unit, you can both do that. That's what that's in terms of what I mean in terms of understanding that you shouldn't be playing mind games with girls and the gangs, the the cultural things that you've mentioned as well. You shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't be hanging around with a bad crowd. You shouldn't be uh indulging into like you know cocaine sniffing drugs all of that all them different things there so that's what i mean in general like when to raise a boy into a man where he knows ethically uh in terms of morality he's strong and no one can shake yeah. him so that's why his... i said if you implement the correct morals and values i feel like yeah 100 percent. as can. a, as a yeah. man yeah I feel like you can. So there's no need for a man there to. No, no, I don't no, feel no. Like no, like there's not no, a need no, for a man. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. If me, if everything would, you know, if certain things would didn't happen in my relationship, I still would have had my father, my son's father there, a hundred percent. Because I feel like as a family unit, you know, like my little brother, for instance, the reason why I feel like he's so different to me is we have different dads, so we have the same mum. So my mum is the same mum as his mum, but my dad left my my biological dad left when I was four. So when I was doing all these bad things in school, being naughty and things in school, not that my mum couldn't have told me because she was telling me, but you know when to the point I'm not listening, like, and what else can my mum do? Lock me in the room. She was locking me in the house and I was climbing out the window, going down the gas pipe, running. Nice. Like, do you know what I mean? But I feel like, obviously, my, my little brother, his, dad, uh, his dad's at home, like, with my mum. So I feel like maybe that is why, you know, he's, he's there doing his homework, making sure he, he's not taking a Mickey sort of thing because, you know, he's got a father figure in his life. But that does not mean that I will not be disciplining my son and my son will be trying to be naughty and do them things because I know I can handle my son. Okay. But yeah, my little brother's got his dad there and yeah, he is absolutely good as gold. So yeah, I can hear what you're saying around that. Okay, fair enough. Eric? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one for me. Like, it's, it's interesting because I've, I've had a lot of female influence in terms of like rearing. My my mum passed away when I, when I was 13. I that's all right, that's all right. But I had a big influence from my auntie. And although... My dad was there. The certain elements that I got from the like the discipline part, I got that from a female instead of a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So obviously I'm so you unique. grew up in a matriarchy uh, kind of kind of household. So. Yeah, yeah. Although my my situation is unique in itself, I know exactly where that discipline came from. Like my dad's Dominican background, African backgrounds, different cultures. Mm-hmm. maybe that had an influence as well but it's it's different like you know so I've I've also met people that had kind of like a similar background to me and they've had that female influence instilled that discipline and that sort of like I I'm scared like obviously grades wise and all of that that's that came from a female it mm-hmm. did not come from my dad mm-hmm. if you think about it women are the ones who bring up the children whether you have a man or not yeah we are the ones that bring up the children 
Do you know what I mean? Like oh, we, we're yeah, the teachers. Yeah. That we're the teachers. We do the homework with them yeah. at home. Yeah. We teach them things that, especially if you've got like a full time dad, right? And he's working all, all them times, and he doesn't really have enough time to like bond with his son and and be there for his son and stuff like that. The the mum always fills that role. So I feel like, like I said, why I said it depends is because if you've been brought up a certain way with the correct morals and stuff like that, you certainly can bring up a man even on your own. Yeah. The male element is just there if he's a good example. If yeah. your if your if your father is not a good example and he's an abuser, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Exactly that, like, and that's why I had to make that choice to feel like, okay, you know, should I continue life with this with this man here, knowing it's my child's dad, to make my child happy oh. and make myself sad, or should I leave him and then make me and my son happy? Mm -hmm. At first, I was very scared to, you know, take that step back, break up with him. I used to think, oh my God, like, I've got family now. I'm so young, I'm a single mum. Like, at one point, I did feel like, what am I gonna fucking do? Like, I did. And then, you know, I sat there, I thought, you know what, I made this decision to be a parent. And since my son has come into this world, I will always be a parent. I will always stand by him and I will always protect him. And when it got to a point where I'm arguing in front of my son and we're, I'm fighting in front of my son, that's got to go. So if that means that my son don't have, you know, a father figure in his life for now, like, obviously, like, now, obviously, my ex-partner has got better and worked on himself. I now let him see my son. But at the time, I didn't feel like, oh, no, I feel sorry for my son because his dad's had to go. If anything, I've been, like I said, I've been more happy and my son's been more happy because as a parent, I won't allow that around my son. Mm. Yeah, no, you did a good thing. It's like with me as well. You've got to really think about, is this male's presence benefiting my child in the way I'm hoping to bring him up in terms of, you know, respecting women, being the provider, you know, being the traditional male um, and stuff like that? You got to think about it. Is he going to benefit my child in that moment? If he's not, get rid. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because so many people sit there and say, mm. oh, think about your kids. They're not going to have a dad, blah, blah, blah. If that father was a good role model, they would have a there dad. would be no need yeah. to remove him from the situation. Yeah, 100%, 100, Do you know what I mean? 100%. So what you're doing is, because what, what I feel like so many people don't realise is staying in an abusive relationship is causing trauma on your children, right? Mm -hmm childhood trauma yeah. that when they grow up they carry on to adolescence thank you and this happened to my my ex-partner yeah my ex-partner he that was his whole life he watched you know his i'm not going to talk too much into his stuff but he watched you know his his family members you know being beaten being hit and you know going for abuse to the point that like jail time was involved with other family like other family members and this is the dad to my son so now he's grown up seeing that if you was in a household and you never see this it'll be a shock to you do you know what i mean like you wouldn't want to do it but his dad done it and now he's doing it i'm gonna break that cycle because my son ain't gonna be doing that shit no yeah no 100%. Uh, but there's also guys like what do you call it my friend i got a friend that we're gonna draw from experiences his mum is it's very like on the soft side and the dad is very masculine and he's t he told me as well that he kind of he knows that if the dad his dad wasn't around what kind of person he would be then masculine energy like the dad's energy like balanced himself balanced him in going into adulthood to make him like a, a decent person because he would be like spoiled he would mm. be, end up being the person that is like you know um you know, going out there just with no restrictions, no boundaries, because the, the feminine energy is totally different to like some of the masculine energy. So that's, the, but that, what I'm saying, that is the, like, if you look at women, women have those energy systems on average. So you need that masculine energy to sort of have like a normal person, normal functioning person. Okay, um, fair enough. Um, you've all said valid points and everything else, but um, what I want to add to conclude on that particular question is that, there is a massive offset in the society today in which we live in because there is a gynocracy and matriarchy at play where women are sort of pushed to fill in certain shoes or certain roles that they shouldn't be filling those roles that uh, especially you in your situation you're being both the mom the dad and hannah likewise you're being both the mom and the dad at the same time yeah he ain't but, got much choice about it <laughs> but the thing is <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes but but the, the thing again that and i see most women do is that deformation of character for the choices in the men that they made right so if you if you are free and willy-nilly ready to defame and obviously like 
you know, drag your ex through the dirt and be like, yo, this is that. That's the choice you you made. Do you know what I mean? And it takes two. It takes two before you jump on that. You, get <laughs> you see me? You see yeah, me? I saw. I saw you. You're ready to snap. You're ready to snap. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it takes it takes two people to tangle, right? So if it's abusive, I get it. There's men that are abusive. There's also enablers, right? Because it doesn't just like I always say, it doesn't just come out of the blue. Like, of course, where, where, yeah. Where, so, so, oh, I spoke about this topic yeah, before, and actually. When it happens, like, obviously, before I had my son, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, he only started, you know, being abusive when I had my son, because that's lies. Before I had my son, he was abusive. And that's the red flags that I should have looked out for that I never. And then I was so naive at the time. I thought, you know what? Even though he's been like this before, now I'm going to be the mother to your child. You might change and, you know, value him more. Value me more and respect me more. But he didn't. And that was a, that was a choice that I made for myself. And, you know, I had to pay for it after. And now I'm better off. I was too naive to see it at the time. I just thought, you know what? He will never do this again. Yeah, like he going to the me. extent of like, when he's displayed the behavior before, you still go to the extent of having a baby with that sort of individual. Yeah, but if I didn't have my son, if I was not, with, if I did not have my son, I would still be with my ex boyfriend now. The only reason why I left him is because I want better for my son. I didn't want better for myself because I was thinking, you know what, I'm good, I can go through this, you know, I'm strong. But for my son, no, nah, I can't be having that around my son. If my son was not born, I would still be with that boy today. So I'm grateful for that. As a mother, I had to make a choice, not as Katrina, as CJ's mum. Facts, fair, fair. Right again, on my on my point on this. So the child requires both, not just because of the masculine energy and masculine presence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are certain things the mother can't teach the son. There are certain things the mother can't teach the son. The son needs to have both parent because it helps him uh, cognitively for uh, for cognitive development, where he becomes assertive. He knows how to handle himself in a crowd, in any situa- in any given situation, right? And he knows how to properly express himself in terms of he does not get dragged into things that he shouldn't be dragged into. And statistics have also shown that the child performed better in terms of education. He's more looked after because one income, he has like better socioeconomic uh, 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 development, right? So one income, uh, two income is better than one, right? So if if there's both parent involved there, you can feed off the child can feed off that, and the child also sees a direct example of what a man and a woman should be like. What do you feel like um, a man can give a child that a woman can't? All the things I've just stated. Emotional connection as a man. Um, the fathers are very important because fathers kids. I don't feel like fathers ain't important. I feel like they fathers, are such an importance, like hundred percent. Exactly. I'm so fathers, here's here's it in the in the grand scheme of things. Like fathers keep sons out of jail and off the streets or getting stabbed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I can do that for my son too. Um, there's a certain when your son will grow to a certain age, right? He will start to baffle your authority. He would look at you. He will look down at your authority. So in terms, he will respect you as your mum. But he'll be like, Mom, you're chatting was. Yeah? Stop no, waffling. You can't talk to me like that. No, no, no obviously he won't say, Mom, stop waffling. No, no. No, no, no that I, I get what you're saying, right? Mom, you're chatting was. I will say what? No, no. <laughs> yeah. no. It's calm you say what, but obviously he can be like, Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Do you know what I mean? But in his head, he'll be like, No, she's waffling. But I'm that's why gonna I'm listen. gonna try my best so, and I'm gonna do everything I do to make my son f- be able to feel like, you know, he can be open with me. Of course, he's not gonna come home and tell me some things, you know. Mums will worry, they will get scared, you know, for their children. But I would like to hope that my son would feel like he can come home and tell me anything and he can be open with me. Yeah, first off, he's not going to have the birds and bee talk with you, right? You don't know that, like, it's not sad he's No, 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 no. <laughs> the, 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 the sons don't have birds and bees conversation with the mums, right? And like I've said, men have a different, men communicate differently to women. When women say men can't communicate, it's just men communicate very directly, very straight up, right? I can, for example, be with um, Eric, we're going to do something, right? He's like, bro, honestly, you should start banging gym. You're getting hella big, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? But you as a woman, you will be a bit more subtle in, with, the, with the comments that you make to your friend. You'll be like, oh, do you know what, Janine? 
Um, <laughs> can you wear that 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 nice dress? No, with kind, me, kind of thing. With me. No, um, no, with you personally. That's anecdotal, right? With I would you, never call my friend fat. Obviously not. But there's a way of saying things. No, that's what I'm saying. That you will be more subtle with it, right? And that's what I'm saying. That man to man. And, and it goes back again to the vetting where I've said, no, a man needs to be involved in the vetting process. When you when you select a guy, when women select a guy, a man needs to be involved in vetting that guy for her to making sure that their goals align and everything else and it's sealed. Because from man to man, we communicate directly. From man to woman, you're going to cater to his feelings. And he's going to be like, I don't need to tell her the entire truth or else I might lose the bucks that I'm trying to get. Right? I might lose access to sex if I tell her the truth too much, if I'm too open. Because if a guy comes to you, he goes, honestly, hey, you're banging, you're pre, etc., etc. I just want to get a turn. You're like, wait, what? He's like, I just want sex with you. You'll be like, nah, sorry about that. Yeah, but going on to this subject, yeah, obviously we're all grown people, we're all big people. Uh-huh. I'm a single woman, so... Obviously, there's levels to it. Obviously, a guy, if a guy ever come up to me and says, yeah, you're banging, I want to have sex with you, hum, it's a no from me. Do you know what I mean? It's a but no for every girl, me, not just you, for yeah, every girl. exactly. But if he come to me and he said, you know what, I'm not looking for nothing serious right now, you know, I want to have a bit of fun, you know, and then we can see where things go, whatever. That can run because he's being honest. He's not sitting there saying, no, baby, girl, I want to give you the world. I want No, but there's guys that will sit there and say anything they can to a female just to have sex with them. Like, it's true. Like, exactly. So I feel he's, like so them he's kind of wording. boys just being smart about how they word things. Exactly. Yeah. So he's wording yeah. his truth differently. He yeah, wo- but I, I'm saying I would prefer it if a guy did not want that from me. I will prefer it for a guy to say, you know what? Instead of saying, oh, yeah, we're going to have an initial future out of this. I will prefer it if he's up front with me so then I can make that decision if I want to do that or not. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, Ben. But most guys are not front because which is the whole thing that's called what? It's called game and chat up lines, right? That's what it's called game. Okay. Because men are comedians as well. They adapt to every situation. So if it didn't work the first time, being brutally honest with you and telling you that he just wanted to sleep with you, then he's going to find another way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's going to say, look, I'm no, being but honest generally, here. Then yeah, because that's, that's what we want. We want honesty. So the minute we hear that word honesty, everything yeah. else switches off yeah. a bit. He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but but that's the yeah. thing. That's the thing, though, with, with most women. Women will say, yeah, honesty, 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 prefer. Guys will play the long game because the, the way I see it, there's, there's two. There's the short con. And that's the long con. The short con is the guy will come portray himself as as for ma- masculine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and he's gonna be crude and crass, but in a sexy way, right? And then you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, can you handle me? He's gonna be saying things like that. Can you handle me? Oh, do you know what I mean? I can give you that super soaker, <laughs> right? all of that, right? And you're gonna feel like. I need to see what I want. I need to see what this super soccer is all about, right? Because probably I've never had that, right? So you're, you're thinking, oh, no, I need to get a tingling sensation, right? But then you got, that's the guy that plays the shot con because he's like, I'm going to be up front with it. And then she's going to be like, oh my God, he's so bold, his energy. Oh my God, I love his vibes, right? Then there's the guy that plays the long con, which is he's going to come to you and say all those pretty little things that you like to hear, which is like, Oh, do you know what, babe? So amazing. I think you and me in a relationship, boy, we're going to have cute babies. Like, oh my God, your eyes are so perfect. Oh, yeah. Like, I know babies. that type of guy. Exactly. Can we go? So they're, they're future fakers. Mm-hmm. You see, do you know what I mean? And then you sit there and you think to yourself, oh my God, that's just, this is lovely, right? You date for three months and then he's out. Mm. He's out of the picture. Mm. And you're like, oh, wait, how come you're ghosting me? He's like, oh, sorry, you and me wasn't a thing. Oh, sometimes you end up six months in a relationship. You're like, what are we? Is that, what do you mean, what are we? I don't like putting <laughs> labels to things. Exactly. And we're friends with benefit. I don't like putting labels to things. And then you look stupid in the situation, yeah. right? So that's what I'm saying. It's important. Yes, you know what you want. And then when you find that guy, when you find that guy that, oh my God, I love his traits, his physical traits. I love his smile, whatever, whatever, right? You then dig deeper because me and Eric, when we come, we converse, right? When, when we talk, it's going to be straight to the point. It's not going to be because I'm not trying to get in his knickers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and he's not trying to get into mine. It's like, bro, what do you want with Katrina? He's going to be like, fam, blood. Do you know what? <laughs> Her back looking ridiculous. I'm just trying to press, bro. I'm not. And then I'm going to be like, bro, no, you can't do that. That's my girl. Yeah. You, you got to be, you got to come correct. 
everything. Katrina is looking for this and she told you about it, did she? Yeah, she told me, she told me. Exactly, so what are you doing? Yeah, mm. you're, you're being stupid. And that's how men communicate then, right? They very overt with that. But now he can dig deeper and be like, okay, if you're ready for that relationship thing, what can you provide for her? Are you financially stable? Um, are you emotionally intelligent to deal with her because she's she's a ball egg sometimes, right? Due to her emotional instability, sometimes she'll be crying. You need to be able to cuddle her. You need to be able to hold her down, right? Those are the things that the guy will be able to go into on your behalf, right? He will go into like the knees and creates the real shit that needs to be addressed rather than the surface level where you're just enjoying dates to Novikov, uh, fl flying Barcelona, wherever it is. And you think, oh my God, this is so much. <laughs> this is a lovely relationship we got, right? But relationships are actually hard. And that's the thing that we have in our current society where women have been sold this fairy tale that, you know, it's, it's all like just romance romance all the time nice lovely dinners lovely holidays etc etc flying dubai all of that but in reality relationships have their tough times mm -hmm. and those tough times you need to truly know a person and that person needs to truly express themselves their feelings and most men don't express them, themselves like that in relationships yeah but i feel like if you if you're in a relationship you should you should express yourself you should like if I'm with someone, I want to know, you know, all about them. I want to know what they're going through if they're upset. I want to know why you're upset. I want to be there for you to support you mm -hmm. and, you know, to get you through the hard time you're going through. But I feel like if you're in a relationship and, you know, your partner can't sit there and be like, you know what, babe, I'm a bit upset today and can't state the reasons why, then there's an issue. Obviously, there might be some things that, you know, guys ain't, guys don't want to talk about. Say, like, this guy's just got a girlfriend and he's just got sacked from work and he don't want to come home and he don't want to tell his girlfriend, you know what, babe, the money's going to be a bit tight this month because I have just been sacked, you know. Like, there might be things that they don't want to, or you might not want to well, say, Well, that's an easy conversation to have. Yeah, but, you know, a guy wants to always feel like, you know, he's got, he's, he's the alpha male, he's the one that's, like, that's got you, do you know what I mean? So I feel like, as a guy, if you feel like you're a bit... Just down there, you might not feel as manly as you could and you might hide things. I don't know. Damn moment, right. But, okay, let's take a situation, critical situation. Again, I'm just trying to piggyback off the Mason Mount situation, right? It's a terrible act, whatever he done, yeah? Right. And, yeah, should get a proper yeah. penance for that. Okay. But here's the thing. So, in terms of sex, let's say a guy has particular desires that he because when i say that men women so for example when i say men and women communicate differently in terms of sex etc etc your readiness might not be when he wants to have it right you might not be ready etc etc right so how do how do you communicate that across because in that act or in the audio clips that we got from him is that she wasn't on it and in the sex in in the set in the terms of like because it's not that women can't satisfy men is that they can't satisfy the demands of sex from men exactly that i feel like if you're in a relationship it don't matter if you're in a relationship if you don't want to have sex just because your husband or your partner wants to have sex with you you do not have to do so and if you yeah. say no it means no no matter if i've been with you 10 years or 20 years exactly do you know what i mean and in the video you can hear that she's saying you know get off me and she's pushing down her legs and and he's pushing them up saying like the things that he's saying that is borderline rape he raped that woman and you can hear it in every single bit of that voice note no one can tell me different yeah, facts. So, so you see there, there's a clear, um, there's a clear breach clear of communication. No, no, no. In terms of there's a clear breach of communication. So communication got lost somewhere around around there. Yeah. Where now is it, it stopped being communication. It became now forceful. Where it's mm -hmm. like I want it, I will have it. Right. Yeah. So what I'm asking in essence is that since we t we're talking about communication, how do you communicate with your man if you don't feel in the mood to, to, to meet that particular demand yes 
So say like he wants to have sex and I was and you're in not the you're not in the mood to yeah. And what he was trying to forcefully do it or he just no, no, asked no, no, no. the sort of thing. And I'm he's just, just, just asking. You're just communicating. It's not forced. Yeah, I've been in that situation with my ex quite a few times, quite a few times. You know, I'm just not in the mood. I just don't want it. And you know, like if that could because you're, ca- you're catering to to each other's needs, right? And exactly that. But yeah, so. like like we're catering to each other's needs. And my needs is I'm tired right now. I just want to get in my bubble bath and get into bed. Now, if I'm getting to his needs, I'm gonna be lying down and having sex with him. If I want to do that, I would do that. Mm-hmm. But if I wouldn't, to, if I wouldn't want to do it, this is clearly for a reason. Obviously, I'm tired, or maybe Fatigue I'm just not in, else, yeah. or maybe I'm just not in the mood, or obviously maybe yeah, or my monthlies or whatever. Like, but just because I'm in a relationship and he is telling me that I must have sex, that does not mean that I have to have sex. No, if I don't want to, I don't have to. What? But then all the time he might be thinking, you know what? Why does my woman not want to touch me? Why don't she want to show me no affection or no love? What's wrong with me, sort of thing? Do you know what I mean? Because that's a that's a big thing in relationship nowadays. Because you hear things like. Uh, husband raping wives and mm. boyfriend mm. raping girlfriends etc mm. etc so i'm keen to hear what you have to say hannah what's the what's your take on that your slice um i don't know for me it's just like obviously communicating and fair enough you're tired right mm-hmm. you're tired and you don't want to do it there and then but there's a certain way of there's a certain way like for example just say you know what oh, i'm not in the mood shrug them off and that's it do you know what i'm not in the mood i'm very tired i've got cramps or something like that but I'll make it up to you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. And at the end of the day, if you have that kind of relationship and that communication, it shouldn't be an issue. Mm-hmm. That shouldn't that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Exactly. It should never escalate, right? Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Sure. Listen, if I'm not in the mood right now, and it's for a certain reason, I'll make it up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'd communicate that. I wouldn't yeah. allow him to feel that you know. Nah, I just don't want you. Or just feel a certain girls, way. Certain yeah. girls say. I'm not in the mood. That's and it. that's it's it. Done. Just shrug him off, and then that's it. it. Yeah. Because yeah, then for him, he's overthinking. Why is she not in the mood? She's just not in the mood with me. I, but I feel like there never like will be a reason why a female would say no. Like clearly from that audio um, mm-hmm. on Instagram, um, with that situation, like you can hear in the voice note that she is distressed. She does not want to, and it don't. It, it can be. Look, he might have been horrible I feel like to it's her. Like accumulation he of abuse. Been, yeah, it's he might have been horrible yeah. to yeah. her two minutes before, and that was that like when I used to not want to see it with my ex partner. It wasn't because I wasn't sexually attracted to him. It was because how you treated me and the things you said to me two hours ago that you've now forgot because you want to have sex. I still feel upset about it. So no, I don't want to have sex with you. Yeah. And you know when you're sitting there saying, "Oh yeah, you were talking to me two hours ago and you called me such and such." No, I don't want to do this. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like. Like, there's I feel like most it. times that is the dead. That's yeah. the reason. Yeah, I mean? something's that's happened during that day, and you're pissed off of it, or you're either tired, or you're on your monthlies. That's only three reasons I can give you. Uh, mm. I think the the monthly ones mm. is obviously standard, if you're on you your reds, I mean? it's yeah. standard. Mm. It's like okay, she's on her reds, mm. no, no go, right? But again, I go back to this point of communication, right? Not that, that, I just want to piggyback on what she said of just saying. I'm tired. Of course, I get it. It's still a valid reason, right? You, you don't need to dive too deep. It's like, okay, yeah, she's tired. That's it. It's a wrap, right? But then it's like, yes, the little gesture of going further to let him know that he's not just rejected, mm-hmm. right? Because certain men don't communicate like that. Cer- certain men, the, the, certain guys, they'll be like, they'll ask themselves 21 questions. Is she seeing someone else? Is she doing this? Is she mm-hmm. doing that? Because yeah, like men have like a fear of rejection, don't they? Yeah. So with a lot of things, when they feel rejected, that's like a that's like a big blow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the women, we all have it. Right? Mm-hmm. We all have it as humans, right? We all have it as humans because... If you turn the woman down, it would be the exact same thing. It would mm. be abuse, verbal abuse, uh, verbal abuse, right? Where she would be like, "Oh, you're you're probably gay. You probably got a small willy." All of that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So there will be tons of questions that will be asked there. But it's just how you communicate that across in a in a sense of saying, "Yeah, I can't right now due to the fact that I'm tired." Of course, obviously, you don't need an explanation why you're tired. It's like, "Yeah, I can't right now." Or we had an argument before. You haven't apologized. Now you want it. So, mm-hmm. which is something that happens in toxic relationships. Some mm-hmm. people love that. They're like after fight sex, you know, fight sex. Where they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we've been fighting. Do you know what? I, 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 we did before, like, have that. Like, you know, the after the kickoffs, you know, the makeup sex. Like, there is such thing as that. There is. But not every time you be disrespectful, we, disrespectful are you gonna have, are we going to have makeup sex? No. It's not every time we argue, should we have makeup sex? You know, sometimes you can. Yeah, the, yeah. There would have big kickoffs, so. Yeah. That's what the communication is needed, didn't it? Where you're like, yeah. look, you affected me this way by saying that I felt some type of way about these words, right? 
and we should never let the conversation our discourse escalate to this level and i feel like they, there's not enough of that in today's days relationships right where people don't fully express themselves like that when the girl expresses herself all the time the guy's like oh she's nagging what about my needs what about my feelings i can't even express them yeah but if you can't make your girlfriend you know feel happy and make your girlfriend be able to sit there and talk to you then why should you have sex clearly that's all you care about again i'm i'm moving a bit away from that i'm saying in terms of like communication allowing space allowing space or creating opportunities for both parties to express to fully express their emotions because if we look at so example, men kill themselves instead yeah. of talking yeah right so the suicide rate is like is literally four in every five yeah right that's the that's the, the level where you create that space of saying yes this is a space safe space for you babe you need you can talk and tell me mm -hmm. like the distress that you're going through because some men see it as they see sex as like a an outlet of maybe something they've gone through the day they might not necessarily need to have sex but they just see it as oh this is a punching bag in the gym kind of thing. Not not the girl being a punching bag, but yeah, but like a de-stress sort of thing. A de-stress yeah, kind of thing where me. it's like, <sighs> yeah, let me let me you know let's copulate and I'll ejaculate and then I'll be fine after that. But <laughs> if you create that space where you can provide a more sensual, uh, a more sensual, and I actually had a, a girl on my podcast. She does like sensuality and sexuality talks, right? And she raised a very good point in that where you create that central space where your man can sort of be uh, vulnerable on the day-to-day -day things obviously not the deep stuff but on the day-to-day -day things with you rather than uh seek sex as an outlet for what he's going through for what he's going through because a lot a lot goes into talking like even therapy you can be that that therapy talking therapy do you know what i mean yeah well, of course if he has any other things there you can you need to recommend cbt uh, cognitive behavior therapy either for yourself or him anyways uh i think we've reached our conclusion of this episode and it was mm -hmm. very nice as well gain insight from everyone else and uh, putting our point across and i have to say this is the first episode where it hasn't been mad like people talking over other people. <laughs> no. We listened to you at the beginning. Yeah, nah, you lot are good listeners. <laughs> How to get to that? Because we're a good crowd. Yeah, <laughs> I do get some wild people here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, again, we're gonna start from the right. What we should take on the podcast, and will you be coming back for another app? For another I session. actually really like you know, and I feel like I've learned a lot. Do you know what I mean? Though, mm -hmm. from everyone's experience, everyone's takes and stuff, mm -hmm. and like, because we're all different ages as well, we're all like different stages in our life as well. So I, mm -hmm. I thought it was really good. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, thank you. Just, okay, good. What about you? Hi everyone. Yeah, I think it was really lovely. It's nice to you know be able to come up with different different agreements. You know what I mean? And all be able to agree on one thing, even if we don't have the same opinion on things mm -hmm. it's nice to hear different different perspectives and yeah it's been a really good chat guys a little gossip <laughs> yeah That's yes. cool. i wouldn't call it gossip but fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> oh yeah it's good it's good like obviously today we've had like a different day to the no normal how you know normally is obviously we're getting you guys to speak out a little bit more see your perspectives and yeah it's been it's been good it's been good yeah, I've enjoyed it. I would definitely come back. Um, you know, it's a good experience. And I feel like with most questions, there is no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because yeah. different situations bring different outcomes. But um, yeah, it's been good. Should yeah. we come back on Sunday? Same time? <laughs> 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 no, that's good. I mean, the whole point of the podcast is to create, uh, uh, you know, healthy to create healthy conversation, relationship conversations, to better relationship outcomes for both men and women where the guy doesn't kill himself after a divorce or a breakup and the girl doesn't end up mash up, you know, all bitten and she, you know, she's in ER or something like that yeah. after yeah. a relationship. So this is why these conversations are important because not enough men talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was what I was saying. Yes, not enough men talk this is what the podcast is and also i want to say this to the viewers out there obviously 
because we bottle up, we have so much rage and people might call it the red pill rage or the blue pill rage, whatever it is, yeah? Is that men, we as men, we need to learn how to communicate those emotions that we feel, right? Yeah. And I've seen some people go a bit wild in the comment section. Be easy. <laughs> be, be easy. Don't attack someone's personality, et cetera, et cetera, because they could be going through some stuff, right? Yeah. And they're using that as a mechanism to, as a coping mechanism to, to cope whatever they're going through. So just communicate and create that space for people to fully express themselves. Okay? Everyone's entitled judged. to their opinion, but I feel like there's no need for personal attacks. No, uh, de definitely, definitely, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, I was your host E, and this was the Dean on Chain podcast. Peace. See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>